Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to be taking a look at a different Linux distro. It's Hefter Linux. I come across this a couple days ago and I thought it was a really beautiful OS based on Arch with the XFCE desktop environment. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are doing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. If you go to their website, hefterlinux.net, which I will include that link in the description below, this is the page you come up with. You've got home, downloads, tutorial, codex, community, and vision. We're going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. It comes with the Brave browser out of the box, so that's the browser we're presently using. I need to adjust the scroll speed on my mouse because it seems to be a little slow, but it goes over Hefter XFCE. Free does not mean ugly. Linux is a beautiful operating system with a solid foundation. Say bye-bye to intrusive antivirus telemetry, massive but unstable updates, and abusive resource usage. Enter the world of freedom. Then they have some merch listed. Then you've got over here where you can go online and look at some of their videos. They're on YouTube. They're on Library or Odyssey. You can reach them on Telegram, their official Facebook page. And then they also have another version called Hefter Linux Studio. It is a professional build for developers, designers, and artists. It comes custom built for people who wish to take charge and have working out-of-the-box professional build so that way they got all the tools that they need to do their job. And then down here, you've got Hefter Linux Downloads. And then, of course, Hefter Linux supports Birotech. Now, this guy is over on DeviantArt. He makes some beautiful images. So if you haven't heard of him or haven't seen him, zip on over to DeviantArt and check him out. He's got some really nice wallpapers over there. And then there's a little tutorial video and what to do, how to install a new Conky, things like that. And then, of course, burning it to a USB stylish polished xfc desktop just a very beautiful website and a lot of information so if you go up top if you want to download it you just go right here and then of course on their website they have it set up to where you can make it dark and then if you are dyslexic they got a little switch up here that you can turn that on that'll help you a little bit with the website so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and close out of this so we can go to the desktop now if you download hefter linux throw it on a USB, or open it up into a virtual machine. This is the screen you're met with. You've got a welcome app, which I love in Linux distributions. It kind of gives you a place to start, which I think, especially if you're moving to Linux, is going to help you out a lot. Or if you're new to a specific distribution, is going to help you out. And it states right here, we advise to clean your computer with Gparted before installing. During the Calamari's installation, many options will be open to you. You have freedom of choice. And then you come down here, you've got main, they've got the partitioning tool, you've got Hefter Linux Basics, Hefter Linux Expert, and then new versions of Hefter Linux are currently being built. XFC and Plasma are available for download. I went with XFCE because a lot of people complained to me, you do too many videos on KDE. Well, a lot of distributions nowadays come with KDE out of the box. So I figured I would go ahead and jump over and look at XFCE on this one. Now, down here on the bottom, they do have auto start checked, which means every time you start your PC, this welcome screen is going to pop up. I believe until you get really comfortable with the OS, you want to leave that on just so you've got a little cheat sheet or help every time you boot up. You go over to the social button, let you know that you can visit them on all their social media. And then, of course, links. You've got the visit Hefter Linux, become a Patreon or donate to Hefter Linux on PayPal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. As you can see, there is a top panel up here, but it is completely transparent. So it's not blocking any of your places up here. And then, of course, when you open an application, let's go ahead and open up Brave. It goes full screen and that panel disappears. So you don't have to worry about that being intrusive in your work area. It come over here. You've got live user. You can click on that. You've got restart, log out, suspend or shut down, date and time, sound, Internet. And of course, you're up to date. And then if you go over here to the little bull icon, you can click on that and it shows you all the applications you have. And then I'm going to go down bottom. You've got a little dock down here. OK, my scrolling speed on my mouse is a little slow, but it is a very responsive dock. You've got Brave. You've got Thunar File Manager. Let's go ahead and check out Thunar. 
And I really love the theme that you're using for this. If you open up Thunar, one thing I like about it is it's very lightweight and just lets you get your job done. It doesn't get in your way and makes things really easy. You come over here, you've got your usual suspects, and then, of course, your base home folders over here. Now, you can tell it does not have a global menu, so that's a negative if you're into the global menu thing. But if you're not, you don't need to worry about it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of Thunar. We come back down. You have Sublime Text, which is a text editor. And it lets you know right off the bat, there's a new version of Sublime Text available. I'm going to cancel it because we're in a virtual machine and I don't need to update it. But you do have a text editor right out of the box so you can get to work and not have to worry about downloading one and finding one. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Next thing we have is Catfish File Search. I know if you're using Linux, you're very familiar with Catfish. All you got to do is come up here, type in what you're looking for, and it'll give you a list of options down here and you can select the one you're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then you have VLC Media Player, Qubit Torrent as your torrent client, and then you have your terminal. So let's open that up. Warning, database file for multi-lib does not exist. Use dash SY to download. Well, we're in a virtual machine, so I'm not going to worry about that. What I want to do right now is see if they have HTOP installed. And they do, so I'm going to go ahead and maximize that so you can see it a little better. I have issued this virtual machine three gigabytes of RAM to use. And right now, at risk, with just the terminal open, we're using 750 megabytes. Now, for an XFCE environment, that's a little heavy. So I'm going to rate this as probably a mid-weight distribution. Now, you also have to take into account that we are in a virtual machine. So some of this operating system is running in RAM at the present. So if you download it, throw it in a virtual machine, or put it on a USB, you're going to get pretty much the same thing I have. But if you do install it, you're probably going to be looking at rest about 500 megabytes, 600 megabytes. So that's still not bad. It's below a gig. So I would go upper lightweight, middleweight. That's what I'm going to say. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the terminal. Come back down to the bottom. You have your settings manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And it gives you a lot of different things you can do here. I'm going to go ahead and maximize that. You've got about me. You can change your appearance. Let's open up the appearance. You can change the style. Right now we're on Juno Pale Night. I'm going to leave it there because I like the way it looks. You've got icons that comes with a lot of different icons out of the box. Right now, we're running Tele Blue Dark. I'm going to leave that. And then fonts. Right now, we're using Roboto Regular. They're on size 10. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and bump that up to 11 and click Select. And as you can see, everything got a little bigger and it's easier to see. And then, of course, your settings. Show images on buttons, show images in menus, event sounds. Just a few different ways that you can customize the way it looks. So I'm going to close out of that. Back down to settings. You've got clipboard manager, desktop, panel, notifications, Kavanta manager, file manager settings, window manager, color profiles, displays. So you pretty much have the settings that you're used to with a Linux distribution. Come back down to system. you got accessibility. Add and remove software. Let's check that out. And it opens up. And if you're familiar with Arch distributions of any kind, this should look pretty familiar to you. The first thing you want to do before you install anything or do any updates on an Arch-based system is come on over here to the three dots. Go ahead and click on that and go to Preferences. When Preferences opens, you want to go to Third Party. And you want to enable AUR support. And then also enable Check for Updates. Then you can go back over to General. And you're good to go. So you can close out of that. And then pretty much what you're going to want to do is just come over here and take a look at what you can download. You can go by categories if you want to. Photo and video, music and audio, productivity. But seeing how I have not refreshed the mirrors on this system, I'm not going to be able to look at much right now. But if you run this on a USB, make sure you refresh and then you'll be able to look at all kinds of different software. Now, I'm going to do a search just in case I can look something up. Let's see if they have OBS Studio. And right there, it is showing the AUR repository, OBS Studio. All you would have to do is come over here and download. But once you refresh this system, it would actually give you the OBS Studio that's in the official repository. So that's a good look at how you download software and do your updates on this operating system. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And then down here, you've got Hefter's Better Lock Screen. Hefter Login, Hefter Welcome App, Session and Startup, Bluetooth Adapter, Settings Editor. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you've got Show Desktop, Trash, 
and then your CPU is running about 14.5% and you're using about 30% of your RAM. Now I'm going to right click on the screen. You can create a launcher, URL link, terminal, arrange desktop icons, desktop settings, and then of course your applications will be available right there. Let's go to desktop settings and desktop settings has opened up. And as you can see, it comes with about 11 backgrounds. I like the one it comes with out of the box. It's a beautiful looking background, but I'm just going to take a look at some of the other ones. I like that one too. And then we can switch to that one. That's a beautiful desktop. And then I kind of like that one as well. So there is quite a few beautiful wallpapers on this operating system. So I'm just going to go back to the one it came out of the box with because I like the way it looks. And then there's that one as well. That's a beautiful wallpaper. Look at that, guys. That is stunning. So I'm definitely going to check out the Deviant Art and check out Birotech because he puts out some beautiful wallpapers. I'm going to go back to the original now. I've said that three times. And I'm going to go ahead and check out menus. You can make adjustments to your menus here as well. And then icons. You can adjust the size of your icons. You can adjust where they are on your desktop. If you wanted to show a home folder, file system, and trash on your desktop, you could. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck those and go ahead and close this out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run up here to the application launcher. And if you come down to accessories, you've got application finder, catfish file search, development, icon browser, meld, graphics. You've got color picker, document viewer, peak. So if you want to use GIMP, you're going to need to download GIMP because it doesn't come with it out of the box. Internet, you've got Brave as your browser. We went over that. Multimedia, you've got peak, pulse audio equalizer, VLC media player. Office, you've got a dictionary and document viewer, so you're going to need to download an Office suite like LibreOffice or OnlyOffice, something like that. Other, you've got GM Run. Settings, we've been through all the settings. We just looked at those a while ago. And then, of course, your system, which covers everything from add and remove software all the way down to XFCE terminal. So that's a quick look at Hefter Linux. It is a very beautiful operating system. It makes XFCE sparkle like a diamond. If you're used to being in a KDE environment and you want to try something different, I would definitely take a look at this. It's just more eye candy with Arch as a base, and it's very, very functional. Is Hefter Linux something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine and give a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Before you leave today, please do me a favor. Like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or even better, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.